much coming back to you again. A uh, bit of a coarse throat because I'm doing this live streaming now on the Bego app. Uh, and so I'm just like talking continually when doing it, so the throat's going. My throat's being used a lot, la a lot, a lot at the moment. So I'm going back to my um, public speaking club tonight where I'll be talking. On Saturday, I've got two essentially speaking events. The first one is the online assessment for church. So I can do that uh, and then because I'll be running a service, just a short one, that'll be the first assessment to see whether I can do it. And then the next one will be um, two full complete services, so I'll then be an official lay preacher with the church, which will be great. Then um, after that thing on Saturday, I've, I'm then in a, uh, on a public speaking competition, and so my throat will be used then. At the moment, I think in order to keep my throat lubricated, I should have a diet of Castrol GTX. You know, because there's so much work being done there, and I'm probably going to have to like study how to look after my voice box, look after my throat better, because it's getting a bit like knackered with all the talking, and of course, you know, I, I talk all the time for my work. So, uh, what I want to do today is I kind of like go back to, uh, I suppose, what I used to do, and maybe telling you my thoughts about all of this weird, wonderful, supernatural, strange stuff, and and what it's all about. I mean, I. You know full well from my early days, I've always had an issue with people who use the phrase it works because it makes it seem like miracles can happen quickly and reliably and as quickly and reliably as turning on an electric light. But also then it's a question of like what the development and what the process is over time. And when I read the book by Nick Franks, he says that when you're going through the process of doing radionics, there is an invisible reward and that is a specific type of self-development and that's worth working for. But I would like to kind of like add to that and say, at what point would you be? Do you want to be able to develop some of the skills that you want to have, and will you actually be able to get them by that time? I mean, I think that when you join like a psychic development circle or one of these, you know, uh, Wiccan groups or pagan groups out there that say oh, we'll do magical developments, yeah, great, okay. But then it's a question of by which year do you want to be able to do something, and what will that be? Because the way I see it is that. It won't work out the way in which you think it'll work out. Uh, and I'm kind of moving in my perception more towards a sense of spiritualism uh, more than magic, so to speak. I'm moving more of a sense of like um, heightened upper, upper awareness and learning how that operates in terms of uh, how things flash into the mind and what's that, what those visualizations are and how they're supposed to operate. Uh, and what sensation of the visualization actually is, which is something genuine. And I've been learning more about that, in, especially in the past year, when I've been doing some various different experiments on myself to see what could happen. Uh, I'm more of the opinion now, even more of the opinion now, that uh, any form of magic, spiritualism, and indeed divination, is very akin to the state of prayer. And that's why I think that doing regular faith-based practices as well as doing other stuff with your meditations and mind machines and binaural beat zaps and all the rest of that is part of the process. But then it's a question of what we mean when we say visualization. And then it's visualization in a prayerful state. But the to try to describe the tone of the concentration. It isn't really concentration in the same way that it is when you're writing something or you're writing an essay or you're even you know, focusing on a really good crappy horror movie that you really enjoy or f focusing to be present in a conversation. It's kind of like a sense of trying to make the visualization as real as you can, but still maintaining that feeling of the prayerful state. Because if you're stepping out of it one way or another, it doesn't seem to come over as clear. The visualization doesn't seem to come over as clear. And it, it's again difficult to explain, but it takes takes mucking about with to get it to get that right. But also with you know the state of mind of reception is a slightly um, heightened sense of awareness, the mood of it is a heightened sense of awareness. The mood for attempting to divine a particular thing is the same, but there's also a sense of focus in a particular direction, whether you're remembering things, um, as it were, from the future in someone else's energy field or something. It's None of these things are easy to describe and to define, apart from to say that it starts off with the prayerful state. It's not just meditative, it's prayerful. It's, uh, 
it's it's high level of, it feels like it, the emotion of it is this high level awareness so i'm not saying that i am highly aware because i don't think i am uh, trying to con communicate that in brainwave frequencies could possibly mean yeah, a combination between alpha and gamma, you know, because your your body is relaxed and tranquil, your mind is alert and clear. Uh, but there's also the sense of, uh, you know, just like reaching out outside of yourself. The process of opening up the chakras one at a time appears to be incredibly important and then closing them back down again and afterwards also appears to be incredibly important. And also, although... I don't want people to get heads up on the superstition of the ritual. There is something about creating a structured ritual in which you are doing everything in a particular sequence that maybe you have um, rehearsed or practiced or at least practiced in your mind sufficiently for you to be able to do it more or less without thinking about it too much. Appears to be part of setting intention. And that setting of intention appears to help the clarity of thought and the search for the experience itself if that makes some sense so you know you can steal things from wicked you can steal things from you know uh, Alphonse Louis concert you can steal things from Phil Hine and all the other guys out there uh, but it's essentially magic is a, an extension of the power of prayer and it is prayer which is essentially the state of mind you have to learn to cultivate and to learn what that feels like not just oh i've done it once therefore i know what it feels like no so you practice it and you carry on doing it in a much more open tranquil and celestial way because the celestial state of mind appears to be like uh, I'm, I'm using even more new age language to try and explain things in a less new age way and i'm doing it badly this sense of like higher higher sense of awareness stuff is really important um including like massive opening up the crown chakra and asking questions upward if that makes any sense and i don't know whether it does it's just ah uh, it's all a bunch of timey wimey wibbly wobbly complex stuff to explain but hopefully even though i've said it in a bit of a rambling way maybe that'll make more sense to you i don't know whether it will or not i have no idea at all but I'm trying, okay, and this will have to do. <laughs> See you in a bit for the next tarot reading video.